All right, choosing the correct database for your web application is one of the most crucial decisions you as a developer have to do when you create a brand new project. Because you don't want to be that person that chooses a database, creates a web application, scales it to a few users, just to then realize at the end, hey, this database is too slow and it does not do what I need. And trust me, migrating a database is not something you want to do. Because A, it's not easy, but also B, it takes a a lot of time. I personally have already migrated a lot of databases, everything from Postgres to MySQL, from MySQL to SQLite, I have done it all and it was not easy, it took a lot of time and I had to deal with a lot of issues. So trust me, choosing the correct database from the get-go will save you a lot of headache. So to get started, let's Right here, start with the question, what database should I choose? So to start with this question, let's first of all start with the first solution, and that's a NoSQL database. A lot of people will tell you, hey, just use right here MongoDB, or hey, just use Firestore. All of these solutions are NoSQL databases, which means they are non-relational, and I think this is a bad recommendation. In my opinion, most of the data which you have is always relational. As an example, I have created a lot of tutorials on the internet and you'll see in all of these tutorials, all of the data which I used was always relational. This means as an example, I had a user table, I had a subscription table and these two tables were related to each other because a user had either one subscription or the user had multiple subscriptions. So either a one-to-one -one relationship or a one-to-many relationship. So what I want to say with that is that almost all data with which you deal on a day-to-day -day basis will be relational. This also means in my opinion right here, a NoSQL database is not a good solution for a primary database. Your primary database should always be an SQL, or in other words, a relational database, and a NoSQL database should be something which can coexist, which you can use with your primary database. Does that mean now that NoSQL is bad and that you shouldn't use it, that we should throw it out of the window? No, this does not mean that NoSQL is bad. It's the complete opposite. NoSQL is a great tool for certain use cases. So as an example, let's say you build a link management software tool, whatever, something like dub.co, and you want to now track each link click. So you want to build analytics. You will see that this data is not relational, which means that a NoSQL database is the perfect choice. So whenever you build something which is non-relational, I would always opt for a NoSQL database. Since we now know that, the question comes now, okay, what host should you use for NoSQL? So in my opinion, there are only two good solutions and that's Firebase and Firestore and also MongoDB. Now Firestore is a managed NoSQL real-time database which is very easy to use and MongoDB is also a managed NoSQL database. Now in my opinion, it does not make a difference if you use MongoDB or Firestore, both do the same job, both are relatively the same price, so use whatever you fancy. I probably would choose MongoDB but at the end of the day, again, it does not make any difference. So we have now talked about no SQL. Let's now also talk about SQL. SQL is interesting because you don't have only one database, but you have multiple databases. Now the three major ones are, for example, Postgres. We have MySQL and also SQLite. Now Postgres right here is my top pick. It's relatively new compared to MySQL and SQLite. It's very cool because it's very extensible. This means, for example, let's say you want to store geographical data in your database, well, you can use a extension which is called PostGIS and you can use this extension to store geographical data in your database or objects. And this is very cool because you can't really do that with MySQL and SQLite. Also, as an example, let's say you want to run a cron job on the database level. Again, you have an extension for that, while with MySQL and SQLite, you don't have that. These features make Postgres my preferred choice and also a database which I recommend highly. MySQL is also an interesting choice because it's very mature. So MySQL has been created by Oracle. It had already a lot of iterations, a lot of features, and a lot of people will say that MySQL 
SQL is faster than Postgres. So PlanetScale, a service for MySQL, has created some article at some point and they mentioned or they argued that MySQL is faster than Postgres. For us indie hackers, it probably does not make any difference. Nevertheless, it's something I want to mention right here. One thing which I also mention right here for MySQL is that it's very, very scalable because they have a tool which is called, for example, Vitesse. And Vitesse is something which YouTube used in their backend to manage its data, which also means that MySQL is a great solution for scalability. This means if you have a huge application, like for example, let's say Twitch or YouTube with a lot of data, then MySQL combined with Vitesse will help you a lot. And then the last database which we have is SQLite. Let's also talk about that. SQLite, in my opinion, is like the smaller brother sister to Postgres and MySQL. This isn't a bad thing. That's actually quite a good thing because SQLite is very, very lightweight, which also means it's very easy to run on your local machine. So I love SQLite for prototyping. It makes everything very, very fast and very, very easy. Now, I know that some companies also use SQLite for production, but I personally wouldn't recommend it for large scale applications because once you start to gain a few million users inside of your application, you will see that the performance of SQLite will degrade and that's not what you want. But what I'll also mention right here is if you want to build, for example, a multi-tenant application where each tenant gets its own database, then SQLite is again a excellent choice. And now if I would have to rank these databases, I would say Postgres is my favorite one, MySQL is my second favorite one, and SQLite, yeah, I wouldn't really use it for a production use case, but for prototyping, it's very cool. And since we now know all of that, let's now also talk about database hosting. So let's start with right here, Postgres. For Postgres, I recommend two solutions. That's either Superbase or Neon. Superbase is just your standard Postgres host, which is managed. It's very easy to use. It's relatively cheap. And that's also what I use for my website, janmarshall.com. Neon, on the other hand, is more of a fancy database. It's a serverless database, which means it can scale to zero and it can also again spin up whenever you have traffic on your website. And with Neon, also the cool thing is that the compute and also the storage are separated, which should again result in a better performance of the database. For MySQL, I recommend two hosts, and that's first of all PlanetScale and also DigitalOcean. PlanetScale is very, very cool. They have a great dashboard, great UI, great DX. Everything works great. They are also using Vitesse. I already said Vitesse is something that YouTube uses in the back end, which should mean that you have unlimited scaling. Now, I don't think PlanetScale is the perfect choice for indie hackers, because A, they don't have a free tier, they cost like $40 a month in the base tier, and it's also not really something you need because the test, let's be honest, you won't have millions of users. DigitalOcean is again great, it's managed, it isn't free, you have to pay something, but it's relatively cheap. And now let's also come to SQLite, and for SQLite I also recommend two hosts, and that's Fly.io and Terso. Both are relatively cool, both are cool because you can host your database in multiple regions, a great solution if you want to build a multi-tenant application with, for example, one database per tenant. From what I also remember, Terso is hosted on Fly.io, which also means whenever Fly.io goes down, Toast Terso will also go down. So yeah, that's all. All of these solutions right here are managed. Again, I always recommend to use a managed solution. I wouldn't manage my database by myself. It's not very easy. And if you're a solo developer, it isn't fun. And yes, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked. I hope you subscribed. I hope you consider becoming a channel member. And I hope I can see you on the next video. So now enjoy your day and bye.